Hi, my name is EJ Massa, and I'm out of money, so I can't rent new stuff to review, so I'll have to dust off some old stuff in a segment that I like to call EJ's Basement. Let's go down into EJ's Basement and see what we can find. It's not bodies. Not bodies. Oh look, today I found an old anamorphic adapter. It's the Bolex Anamorphot 8 slash 19 slash 1.5x. It's a tiny little lens and I'm assuming it was made for 8mm cameras. However, I didn't research this and I don't read or care about anything. So I guess we'll never find out. Anyways, it's compact and solid and it's made out of glass and metal and it's just it's old engineering at its best. The great thing is it could be adapted to modern cameras to achieve an anamorphic look. Like in my anamorphic iPhone video I did. But this time you can adapt it to real cameras. Oh, sick burn! Said the iPhone's not a real camera. I'm making a statement. Of course it was made for a tiny film frame, so I would only use this on crop or small sensor cameras. I'd forget about using it on full frame cameras. Mounting this anamorphic adapter can be a little tricky, unless you get lucky and find a suitable clamp on eBay. So I ghetto rigged it using a 24 to 37 and a 37 to 52 millimeter step up ring. You can attach it to a prime lens like this 85 millimeter Nikon. Once you got that, you can calibrate it with a flashlight. Just make the flare horizontal. I use a grid as a reference. When it's level, I use a strip of gaff tape to hold it into place. I'm sure there's a better way to mount it, but that's the way I do it. I'm much better at mounting your mom. Anamorphically. Excitement Bicycle would like to formally apologize because the previous joke didn't make any goddamn sense. Well, now we're ready to go. Like many anamorphic adapters, this requires dual focusing. That means focusing on the adapter itself and on the taking lens. This makes rack focusing almost impossible, especially if you're using a Nikon like me, which focuses in the opposite direction. But unlike other anamorphic adapters, it's really easy to nail the focus. I've used the SLR Magic Anamorpha and I found it really hard to focus with that, unless you really stop down the taking lines. Oh, enough yammering already. Let me show you some shots of things that I've taken with the lens adapter. The image right out of the camera will look weird like this until you squeeze it down and post like this. Then it looks cinematic. I've tried squeezing down other things to make them cinematic, but it doesn't work. They just die. The adapter provides a 1.5 stretch, which with the 16.9 record field gives you a 2.66 to 1 final aspect ratio. Numbers! One of the aesthetic benefits of shooting anamorphically is the presence of oval bokeh. It's important. Important. It gives the out-of-focus areas a waterfall look. You can channel your inner Wes Anderson. Since this is an old adapter, it tends to soften the image a bit and cuts the contrast, which actually imbues some character into the digital video, which can seem too clinical and sharp. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to show you that disturbing imagery of the lamb being cooked. Oh, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to show you a different angle of that same lamb being cooked. I, I'll show, go to something different. Click here if you want to see the anamorphic nightmare lamb on loop for 10 minutes. Why do I do these things? I'm, I'm losing control. Now, of course, the most important feature of anamorphic lensing is lens flares, baby. Pew, 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 pew. You can go big and bold, or you can have subtle ones. Even this little girl loves lens flares. And hey, add some slow-mo. Make that footage even more cinematic looking. Yeah, cinematic. Add some style to your shallow bland video. I know I do. So why do you even need an anamorphic adapter? Couldn't you just crop the frame and add some lens flares and posts? Well, then you wouldn't have anything to be smug about. 5D, huh? I bet you don't even shoot anamorphically. <laughs>
The Bolex Anamorpha is actually on the cheaper side of lenses. It goes for sub 1K on eBay. So if you find one for a good price, pick it up. It's a little more accessible than the popular Isco Rama for a third of the price. And you know what? It's kind of similar results. Professional anamorphic lenses can cost tens of thousands of dollars. So if you want to dip your toe into the anamorphic pool, this is a cheap place to start. More options are coming down the pipeline, like the two times adapter from SLR Magic and a micro four thirds anamorphic lens from Vedra. Combine that with the GH4's new firmware for anamorphic lens support, and you got yourself an anamorphic party. Speaking of parties, I'm terribly late for a party of my own. So I'll see you next time. Bye. Party. Hi, it's me, EJ, again. If you want to watch more reviews, you can... Oh, fuck, this is wrong. If you want to watch more reviews, you can click some of these ones. If you like animations, this is one making fun of Kickstarter, which is pretty funny. And don't forget to subscribe. It helps me wake up in the morning and do this. See you next time. Mine is my friend.